Hello everyone and peace of Christ all of you. I hope my voice is coming good and clear. Uh, let me know if you have any difficulty from your side. Uh, today our topic is about Iran. And actually last time we tried to go live, we have difficulty. I hope today we will not. Uh, let me know please if you have any problem from your side. Uh, Let us share with you in the screen some news from around the world. If you go right now and search, you know, by your own self, by yourself, you will find there's tons of news about what's happening in Iran. Uh, but most of the news, really, it's not focusing in, uh, in, in reasoning and what is really behind uh, what's happening. Like why exactly, and what, what we see right now, is it really because of oppression uh, made by a regime? Uh, is that the problem really? Is it like the Islamic government of Iran is the problem? Uh, or there is something way more than this? Uh, let us see here. If we go. All right, that is better. So here we have a page from a Twitter. Uh, as you see here in Twitter, uh, they have tons of uh, videos posted by people through proxy because Iranian people, they can't really log online anymore and they cannot post videos uh, about, uh, about what's happening in Iran. But there is tons of videos posted here and there. You know, people still, they have their way. There is a proxy software they can, they can uh, post and they can share. And the video you see, uh, how people are really uh, so upset, so angry from what's happening. Uh, but you will notice that everybody, like look at those women, those are women are supporting, those are the women who support uh, women, they empower women. But, uh, uh, you know, none of them really care. You know, they are taking pose with balloons behind them <laughs> and they have a big smile in their face when people are dying. I mean, do you see how they support women? Like those are for women, like those who stand for women. They, you know, they go to the saloon, they do their hair, they put eyelashes in the size of a, of a wing of airplanes, they do their nails, you know, for 10 hours, and then they come here and they say they support women. So, you know, it's what people do in the West is a mockery of what's happening really for real people in the ground. And it shows you how people, how the world don't care. Here women are burning their hijab, dancing in the street, which is, this is extremely unacceptable in Islam, you know, like, you know, this is, you know, uh, women after women, they are just, the whole fire is just burning hijab. And that's why I said, you know, this is the death of hijab in Iran. Actually, the hijab is dead long time ago. But then when the oil came, the oil came to existence. That oil made a new, uh, let us say, a situation that they spend a lot of money. They control propaganda, Fox News, CNN. You see, all of those, even those who speak supposedly for women of freedom, in fact, most of them, they are partners with big businessmen who support terrorism in the Middle East. You know, uh, uh, Osama bin Laden, his family, they are partners with George Bush family. Uh, Obama, he is a Shia and he always he supported Iran. Uh, uh, Biden, I mean, it's not a secret, this guy, he called Prophet Muhammad, who he is the one who the first oppressor for women. Uh, I mean, I don't know what to name for you and who I will name for you. Every single scumbag in the world, in Islamic, in, in, sorry, in Western world, they praise Islam. And now they are talking about oppression of women. So how you, how you praise Islam and you say you support women freedom? Is it the hijab is Islam? When Biden, he called Muhammad, the filthy Muhammad, the Najis, because Muhammad called us Najis, so we have the right to call him as he called us. Actually, today there's a guy, his name is Mansoor, in the comment section in the previous video. He says, please don't cross the line 
don't insult. And I said, should I call you from now on, Najis? So Mansoor, this is for you, from me, and now on. Each time I speak about your prophet, I call him Najis, because he calls us Najis. When you ask people for respect, go respect your women first. Go respect your mother first. This is the cult of no respect to anything. You know, Muslims, they speak too much about the amazing religion of Islam. But the second you ask them questions, if you prefer to live where, where you live. If you want to make a video against anyone, which country will give you the freedom? The answer we know. Millions of Muslims, they, they, they cross the sea and hundreds every month die just to cross to Europe. Nobody want to go to Somalia, nobody want to go to Iran, nobody want to go to Saudi Arabia, and nobody want to seek refugee in, in, in Emirat. But all of them, they share one thing. The rich and the poor, they share one thing, Islam. So all this propaganda and the TV, etc., speaking about oh well, look what happened in Iran. Uh, we are so but nobody want to say the truth that this is because of Islam this is not because of a regime they forgot that the regime is called the Islamic Republic of Iran it's not a regime it's an Islamic regime the same oppression for women in Saudi Arabia the same oppression for women in Qatar except for the wife, uh, the mother of the prince, Moza, Banana. She called her, you know, her name is Banana. She controlled the country by, by her son. U.S. desire. <laughs> they are making fun of... <laughs> I mean, there is tons of videos in... Uh, in in uh, in Twitter, uh, and you will see how how the world is full of of uh, uh, of stupidity. And you know, the truth is that in the West, nobody care for what's happening in Iran. All what they care is how we can get their oil. And I, actually, Biden right now, he was discussing, and he is so uh, so much. Uh, uh, in love with the regime of Iran because he needs the Gaza price to go down before the election. The election is in coming weeks, few weeks from now. And the prices and the inflation and the and things is very bad for, for the, because of his stupid decision. When Trump was in the office, the gas is, is, is so cheap to the point it's like buying water. Biden and the Democrats took over, the price of gas became so crazy. The price of food went more crazy because gas is connection with everything. Transportation means food. Transportation means uh, electricity. Transportation means because all the fuel is a fuel in everything. So we have a stupid Democrat party in ruling, and those people, they want to go green, but they drive the most expensive cars. When they want to fly from place to place, they don't take an airplane like us. They want to take their own private jet. And they are the one who speak about saving the world, like uh, Bill Gates. Bill Gates want to save the world, but when he transforms from place to place, he have like 80 bodyguards with him. He have his own airplane. But they, wanna, they, they ask you to turn off your light if you are not in the bathroom. So those stupid Democrats are number one supporters for terrorism in the world. Obama, he handed Iran the golden key of release after long time sanctions. Then Trump, he put the sanctions again. Then right away, the first day Biden, he took the office, he stopped all digging in USA for oil. He canceled our lines with other countries. And he is a start buying oil and gas from Russia. You believe it? And, uh, and, uh, like, uh, even after the war with Ukraine, they're still buying, for, for a certain time, buying Russian oil. We have the most stupid government, if you think about it, but we have the most evil government, if you go deep. Because those people, they knew what they are doing. 
They knew they are supporting oppression. They knew they are supporting dictators of Islam. They knew that what they are doing is evil, but what they care for is just how to take over power. So he will sign an agreement with Iran, so Iran can sell their gas, and they will get more powerful, not the people, the terrorists in Iran. This is the plan of Biden from day number one. And when Trump, he would sanctions, all the Democrats, they start cursing him. Stupid, idiot, what are you doing? And then the, the drama continue. Uh, look at this police. All of those are police coming, you know, and they will beat women. They will capture women. Look at this. Look at this. Look at this. You know, I don't know if you have, if you ever hold one of those in your hands. Those are very heavy duty stick. They will leave a bruises in your, in your skin for two months or three months from that date. Those women, they are doing nothing. They are not holding guns. They are, you know, they are women. And by the way, in Islam, we respect women, in case you do not know. The Quran says, beat them. Chapter 4, verse number 34. Beat them. If you see the, any rebellion on them. So the Islamic regime is following the Quran. If you fear any rebellion, what is the solution? Beat them. You might say this doesn't say that in the Quran CP. Open the Quran right now, chapter 4, verse number 34, I'll read it. Beat them. And then you will find a Muslim saying to you, oh, we beat them lightly. Well, I can't tell. Secondly, it doesn't matter really if you beat your mother lightly or harshly. Beating is beating, and the purpose of it is to oppress them, is to force them to do things. It's an act of violence. So all the news is focusing in one thing, Islamic regime or regime of Iran. But the fact this is Islam, my friend. And look what's happening. You see, they try to protect Islam by violence. Islam die faster than it's growing. Like, you know, if you ask a Muslim, how many Muslims in the world? They will say, like, the numbers that they depend in the person and the mood. Like, in the morning, it's 1.6. Afternoon, it's 1.9. By night, it's 3, 3 billion human beings. So, look at the Muslim girls, what they are doing. Do they look like Muslims for you? I mean, they obviously, they love Islam so much. So, uh, uh, <laughs> When they say, when we ask Muslims about their numbers, you know, uh, uh, and especially like those in YouTube, uh, and they say to you, look, we in, in Iran, we don't have gays. In Saudi Arabia, we don't have gays. We don't have atheists. I mean, <laughs> the reality, this religion is like a wood, you know, eaten by termite and nothing left except the outside. The second you poke it with your finger, you make a big hole in it. So don't poke Islam with your finger. This is the reality. And you know, uh, uh, there is actually a video in Twitter about uh, Ilhanu, Ilhanu Omar. You know, this uh, uh, congresswoman, the Somalian congresswoman, who hate Israel, they want to put sanctions, but she supports not to have sanctions in Iran. And actually, she received the donation from the Iranian regime. Not a single word, not a single word from Ilhan Omar. Ilhan Omar should dance with gays and lesbian festivals. But Ilhan Omar, she will not support, you know, a human right for, for women in Iran. Why? Because she received donation. This is the woman they killed. She's very young, you know, one woman. She did nothing. She was just not wearing the hijab properly. And, you know, you know there is a there is a in in the, in the Bible. Uh, I don't know if many of you remember. In the Bible, there is a statement about wearing hijab, and you will see that they thought that this woman she is a prostitute at that time because she was wearing hijab because hijab was a method of a prostitute to cover their identity. So when a Muslim, he speak about against uh, like taking hijab off, the fact your wife, she can cheat on you 
and she can walk with her boyfriend next to your shoulder and you will never know that this is your wife. Because it is the easiest way, the best way for cheating, for prostitution, and this is what women they used to do in the old days. They cover themselves totally, they cover their face too. What is the purpose? The purpose is very simple. Nobody will know who we are. So we can do as we wish. A woman walking without hijab, she is a woman walking with honor. And obviously she has nothing to fear. You see, we hide things. We hide things only when we know that they are wrong. Do we agree? All of us, we do that. Like when we get outside, when we get outside, uh, we don't... You know, we don't go and talk about family matter as an example because we know it's wrong. But family matter still exists. Wherever we go, it's in our head. We don't talk about uh, uh, or we don't show things we should not show. Uh, uh, you know, like uh, uh, always you hide it. If a man, he is cheating his wife, he don't go in the street and tell everybody. He hide it. Same as a woman, she is cheating her husband. Same as a man, he is stealing. We hide things because we know they are wrong. Either they are shameful or they are shameful or wrong in the same time. So a woman, she is not wearing hijab. Obviously, she is doing uh, 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 the opposite of shameful. She has nothing to hide. She is not ashamed. Why she want, why, what is the purpose of covering the face? The face of, uh, uh, what is the purpose of covering the head? What exactly that do? Is that will make her a decent woman? So she can't sleep around since she now they are wearing hijab? Since when is that working? This is the most... So this religion, uh, uh, so-called Islam, if we can call it religion, focus in the silly stuff, but the worms is all over it. So look in this religion. This woman, she can go and get married for five minutes to do muta and get paid in Iran. But she have to wear hijab. So prostitution is legal in Islam, as in chapter of Al-Ahzab. Muhammad, he says, force not your girls to do prostitution if they choose a chastity. And if you force them, Allah is all merciful. Open legal license for prostitution. But the women wearing hijab is a problem. So what exactly the hijab do to Islam? What is the purpose? The purpose is... You know, this is a man-made religion, and we follow blindly an evil man. His name is Muhammad. He is obsessed with sex. He is obsessed with women, but he hates women. If, you, if we go in different, uh, let us go to and show some hadith, so we can love together at Muhammad and the intelligence of this man. But by the way, Muhammad, he teaches his followers that women are stupid. Women are stupid. Uh, let us see. <clears throat> okay, let us see this one. Look what this madman Muhammad is saying here. And actually, everything this guy he say. Is a, is, a, is a proof of a stupidity of the man who put those rules on women. So here Muhammad is teaching Muslim women that, you know, you are stupid. You, most of you will go to hell. Why we will go to hell? One of the women, she said, in the time of Muhammad, there was a woman. She is a smart. She is a questioning the stupidity of this man. Muhammad, he claimed, and this is why the Muslim men, they look at women. They have to wear hijab because they are like a goat. They are stupid creatures. So he says, well, you know what? Uh, you, are, uh, you have deficiency in your intelligence. And you are ungrateful to your husband. What about the husband who is ungrateful to his wife? <laughs> so the woman is always the one she is ungrateful. You know, was Muhammad grateful to his wives? 
If you are grateful for your wife, you will never have second wife, third wife, fourth wife, fifth wife, sixth wife, seven wife, seven, eight, eight wife, nine wife, eleven wife, twelve wife, thirteen wives, and unlimited women. A person who is grateful to his wife, he will not bring more wives. Did this woman bring another husband? No. Here you see how filthy, how disgusting this person is. And not only that. In one hand, Muhammad, he claimed that women, they have deficiency in their brain. They have deficiency in their intelligence, as you see, and deficiency in their religion. And then in the same line, he say that women, they can fool a man. <laughs> I mean, how they are stupid and how they can fool a man. You see, the man is the smart one. Okay, that's good. We will go with you, Prophet Muhammad, the Najis. How she is the stupid and she can fool a man. Any, uh, he, he says, I have, I have not seen anyone more able to remove the understanding of a burdened man than one of you. Look how the stupid women she can do that. Do you see the stupidity of this idiot? So, in one hand, the woman is a stupid. On the other hand, the woman, she can make the man stupid. So who is the stupid? Who is the stupid here? For sure, Muslims, they have no answer and they don't dare to answer. Who dare to answer Muhammad? Who dare to question Muhammad? We do. They are coward. We do question him, and we laugh at his statement. He is laughable, he is a jokeable, I don't know if I'm saying the word correctly in English, but he is very, very stupid man. Imagine I, I, I say I am a wise man, and the woman next to me is a stupid, but she, she, she did fool me. Look, what the heck, what is your wisdom? In one hand, we say she is half a brain. In two seconds after, she says she is the one who make a man lose his mind, act stupid. We blame her for everything. Uh, if you notice in the, in the uh, title, I had the name and the picture of Elon Musk. You know, he, right away, this guy, he volunteered to do. Actually, I like things about this man. I mean, he is a billionaire, yes, but there is many of them. He is number one rich man in the world, yes. But, you know, this guy, he have a special vision. When the war in Ukraine happened, right away, he was the one who gave Ukrainian help because they would lost their internet. Actually, he did help better than weapon with the internet. Because, you know, internet today is the, is the best way of communication, the fastest way. And now, Elon Musk, he said, you know what? They stop the internet for them, so they cannot share the massacre they are doing. They cannot share the torture they are doing. I am going to step up and I'm going to use my technology for free and give it to the people of Iran so we can support them at least, at least, show the world how much suffering they have. So I have really good respect for this action he did. This man, he proved, uh, he is, you know, he is way better than all those hypocrites in the world who have billions and trillions of dollars, who don't do nothing, you know. They do actually a business with those countries. He do what nobody do. But is that really enough? No, because the USA government, I don't think they will allow him to do that. You see, the Democrat, 
And that, by the way, I speak against Democrat. I don't like the Democratic Party. I believe it's an evil, 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 evil party to the bones. I could not see one good thing about this party. However, there is way big number of Republican who they are evil, the same as Biden. And here we can switch side. What the difference between supporting Saudi Arabia and supporting Iran? Nothing. So we have Mr. Trump shaking hand with the Prince of Saudi Arabia. And Mr. Trump says they pay us a lot of money. This guy is like a kid, you know. He say, he say what he think right away. He, he's not a politician. They pay us a lot of money. So we forget about the oppression of women, oppression of a human right, oppression of belief, faith, freedom of speech. We forget about it because they, get, they paid us a lot of money. So if you move between them, you will find that, will find that both of them, they are faces of, two, of one coin, Republican or Democrat. And when I talk about Republican, I'm talking about those who they are in the face, not Republican. I am I myself, I vote Republican always. But you see the hypocrisy of those who they claim American dream. When they want Saudi Arabia is our friend. When they want Iran is our friend. When they want Saddam Hussein is our friend. When they want al Qazafi is our friend. But zero, none of them believe in a human rights. When the Saudi crown prince, he ordered to slaughter the terrorist, Khashoggi. He is a terrorist. At that time, because Trump, he was a friend with the Saudi, the Democrat went crazy. We should cut relationship with them. We should stop doing things. Okay, now by the end of office, what he do? He go to visit them. And what he do? He go and meet with the crown prince himself. And what he do? He did not even welcome him like a man. He did not even shake hands with him. I mean the crown prince. When Trump, he went there, they have 65 chicken from Islamic, they called them Islamic country leaders, waiting for Trump, and Trump was schooling them like kids. Joe Biden went there, there was one person waiting for him. The same as Obama. So in this, in, you know, in the politics of USA, I, my advice, and this is why I'm saying to the Iranian people, wherever you live, don't wait for America to support you. Don't wait for Germany to support you. Those are, they are in bed with those regimes. There's a big corporations, they are waiting patiently to release the sanctions in Iran. The one you see in the White House is a puppet. He is not the president. Corporations, they gave orders. And they say to him what to do. If you want us to support you, you do this. If you want to win the coming election, you do that. Nobody care for you women. Nobody care for what will happen to you. And nobody care what will happen to us as Americans. They school us about human right. YouTube, as an example. YouTube, they keep removing my videos. Violation, you know, violation. You see a Muslim posting videos uh, teaching terrorism. The video is there for years. We say to a guy, potato, they say this is against our guideline. The Muslim, they call us najis, which means filthy, dirty, like garbage. YouTube, no, have no problem. A guy, a girl, her name is Ali Dawash, a threat, an apostate to kill him. And the video is still there. The guy appealed for the video to be taken down. YouTube says this is not against our guideline. 
So what, what I'm trying to say to, to people who they are seeking truth, all the power of the devil is against you. YouTube, Twitter, all of them. You see, you might see like now in Twitter, they are uh, th those posts. You will say how Twitter support Iran. But you see those posts. But did you see Iran? Any account of the government is banned? They banned the account of the president of USA. Can they ban the Islamic regime propaganda, you know, account? Just a question, you know? The Islamic regime propaganda account is, is there. The terrorist, the one who was leading war in Syria, his account is there. Hezbollah account is there. ISIS account is there. The Muslim Brotherhood account is there. The Trump account is not there. <laughs> I mean, the president of USA, he cannot have a freedom of speech. Where? In USA. And this is when Trump was a president. This is not when he was, like, you know, let's say, maybe he was a senator, maybe he was a congressman. No, no, he is the president. In front of us, we see tons of accounts of the Iranian regimes Iran foreign ministry. Welcome to the official Twitter account of the Ministry of the Foreign Affairs, Islamic Republic of Iran. Follow us in Instagram. I post anything in Twitter, they keep flagging me, and then I decide to delete my account. I'm not the person who was beating women in the street. Why my account was flagged all the time and you know they threatened me to delete it and then I said you know what get lost you and your website but the terrorists themselves they have their account will never be touched so the same platform you you think it's a way of a freedom you are fooling yourself this is not a platform for a freedom this is a platform to make money to support terrorists and they need you come because we need to put something in the table they are not welcoming those videos because they support them those are Muslim women showing their hair women walking without without the hijab the scam of the hijab the morality police police in in a religion have zero morality I mean in this religion you can have sex with a child but a woman, she cannot show her hair. In this religion, women, she can give her breast to a stranger, but she cannot show her hair. A guy, he stop his car, he go to the car of other women, and he start beating the hell of her because she is showing her hair. I mean, this is the most disgusting religion ever. This is the, the grave, the, the, the funeral of this poor woman who died. And by the way, the numbers of people who died since the protest is really huge. Women cutting their hair because of that. Those are women in the dumpster. And you will see there's a lot of men, by the way. This is telling you women or men or women in Iran, they are sick and they spit at the cult of Muhammad. Nobody wants this religion. They enforce it on your nose. And they claim that this religion is really a religion of, uh, 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 of, of peace. Uh, it's not showing the screen. Oh, okay, sorry. Uh, this, it's my fault, I think. Go ahead. Uh, give me a second. Give me a second, please. Yeah, it's my fault. Anyway, you just can go, you can go yourself, you can go to Twitter and just type Iran and you will see all those things I showed, I, I, was, I was speaking of. This is a Twitter, as you see. So, you know, I mean, you can, you can watch it yourself. So, this is what we mentioned, you know, we were talking about, I was going through this. This is the funeral of this woman 
women cutting their hair for sadness, you know. No shame, no shame in this cult. Those are women, you know, around, you know, like uh, showing support, showing their hair in Iran. Uh, but trust me, what they will do later, they will take their pictures of those people when things cool down and they will arrest them in the middle of the night. And rape will start. I mean, you see this guy, Trudeau? This Trudeau is the most stupid idiot ever you can imagine. This guy is, a, is, a, is, a, is, a, is really something. But this guy is better than all of them. In many ways, when it's come to politics abroad, he is so stupid inside. As an example, he made a minister of immigration, and he was a Muslim, and he flooded Canada with, with Muslims. This is the women who, you know, who was killed, tortured. Those are the police, you know, the peaceful police of Allah. Allah need police. I mean, what you can do? Islam is a good religion, and this religion need police, fully armed. Women fighting, fighting police. I mean, look how brave this woman actually is standing in front of the police. Isn't it amazing? And now they start beating the hell of her. This is telling you how much those people, they are really desperate for freedom. They cannot take it no more. Look at this, all of those. Yet, yet Iran, Iran, they have their own account in Twitter. All Iranian regime accounts are there in Twitter. They are there in YouTube. The oppression of the West happened always against the one who said the truth. And let us hope that YouTube will not take my video, this video down. You never know. I mean, YouTube is a, is a, is a mighty justice atheist organization. They stand for gays and lesbian, but not in Iran. They stand for women's rights, but not in Iran, not in Saudi Arabia. Not any, don't speak against Islam. The second you speak against Islam, YouTube go crazy. So what we can say, the truth is the truth, and the truth is ugly, you know? And then, by the way, second day, the Iranian regime, they, uh, uh, you see all those women, they are, look, you know, old women, those old women, they are carrying the picture of this young lady, tens of thousands. This is not a joke. This is not, um, uh, this is not 10 women, 3 women, 5 women, 100, 10 women. Look, this is endless number of people walking in the street. And all of them, they are women. What is what they want? They want freedom. That means they are voting against Islam. That's why I say this is the day where it's proven that Islam is dead. They want freedom. When a Muslim woman, she say, and hundreds of thousands of them, look, they are cutting their hair, taking off their hijab. When, when hundreds of thousands of them, they do that, they are voting. This is, this is a real vote. This is a real-time vote. We don't want Islam. You know, when a woman, she cut her hair, she is sacrificing her, she sacrifices her beauty. This is not, not a joke. A man, he can shave his head. They are burning the hijab. This is a voting, this is a real democracy, which Islam is afraid of. 
The Muslim they show you a Muslim woman wearing hijab, how beautiful she looks like. Yeah, with 10 kilograms of makeup, the hijab will not make you look beautiful. It's just a fake beauty. Look how he slammed her. He smashed her in the in the edge of the road. Look at this, look at this. And if you ask yourself, the, the police clothing and their armors sold by who? Is it maybe from Germany or maybe from Sweden? Uh, maybe from USA. <laughs> Listen, we don't support them. We don't. No, no, we don't. Here it shows you in nine days, Iran protest, the numbers of death in nine days. 180 according to this. And the numbers of those people who've been arrested is 8,000. And this is posted when? I don't know how, how old this post is. September 26. Uh, look, look at this old woman, poor woman. I mean, in her age, I don't know how old she is, hardly she can walk. And she is joining the crowd to fight the oppression of Islam. And then they say to you that Muslims, they enjoy Islam. Islamic countries are safe. In any Islamic countries, the second you say, I want to do protest, you are dead or your family will disappear. Those are the sheikhs, brother. <laughs> Look at this. The president of Iran, Mr. Riyasi, visited the people who were injured by the right, the, 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 the uh, like, uh, you know, the violence of those people protesting in the hospital on Tehran. Oh, this is a guy, he was injured by who? By the women. <laughs> Oh man, don't let the West media, Western media show the truth, show the truth upside down. You ask yourself why this account is even allowed. As long as Twitter practice no freedom of speech, because this is what they do to me. This is what they do to any people, they censor them. How come they don't censor those terrorist accounts? Is that really what's happening? The one who have guns in their hands is the victims and the one who are women being beaten by, and we, we have the victims in front of us. The president is coming to visit a victim, brother, a victim. <laughs> oh boy, oh, Lord have mercy. Why this non-Muslim support Iran? Tim Anderson saying, this person who would not vote for any religious state is a strategic supporter for the Islamic Republic of Iran. I don't know what this post is about. You can read it yourself. Crazy, crazy stuff. Crazy word. But I like really this picture. This picture is hilarious. I guess this is Muhammad, a woman, she grabbed him from his tail, she put him in a stick, and she is going to dump him from the top of the cliff. That is a beautiful picture. Maybe we should print it. Muhammad in the hook. Who can beat that? Nobody. So, you know, uh, uh, what's happening is really disgusting. I see our numbers is not good because we are coming in the wrong time. Uh, as you know, like, uh, by the way, did you guys enjoy my, my video in, uh, in uh, where Prophet Adam, he did landing? Who of you did not watch it yet? If you did not watch it, go and watch it because this is like a, a, a special offer. <laughs> Actually, when I was in the in this location, in this garden, 
I, uh, there is a, you know, I, I enter as, as always, you know, we Arab, we do the things in the opposite way. So I enter from the exit and I exit from the enter, the entrance. So uh, there was an Indonesian woman, uh, I don't know what the, the reason for the conversation. So I, I, she, I asked her, where are you from? She said, Indonesia. So I said to her, orange, orange. <laughs> she did not understand. Strange, you know. You know, I mean, come on, my, my Indonesian was so clear. Honestly, it was so clear. I said, orange, orange. She looked at me like, what? And then I like, I don't think she is a real Indonesian. How come she don't understand what orange, orange mean? And this Indonesian woman, she was not wearing hijab, just to let you know. Uh, so in case you did not see the video, go watch it. All right. And uh, there we found that, you know, this is where the prophet Adam, he landed, peace be upon him. And we were looking for the purse of Eve because when she landed, her purse opened, you know. You know, all lips are stick. Those are very good because organic lips are stick. You can imagine how many women I would go and look there. They are organic lips are stick. All things when Allah, he sent Adam, you know, in the garden. But, uh, you know, I forgot that, uh, you know, Eve, she landed in Jeddah and uh, Adam landed in Sri Lanka. Anyway, a wrong map, you know, GPS, what you can do about it. Sometimes GPS, you know, messed up. So going back to our topic, my advice to the Iranian, uh, actually there is an interview, hold on, there's an interview in one of those liberals TV. Let me see where I can find, I took a screenshot for it. Yeah, this one. Let me show you. <laughs> Oh boy. This is Brother and Sisters American TV. All right? And they brought an Iranian woman to do interview with her. In the left, we have American journalist from the Democratic Party. She looked like a terrorist. She looking at the Iranian down, speaking to her as if speaking she is as like like literally as if she is speaking to a dog. What do you want to say to us? And she's speaking. And look at her face, how she is looking down. And the other side, the guy, he is the guy who told her, what do you expect from us to do? We cannot go for war for you. The smart Iranian women, she said to those both donkeys, she said, we don't want you to go for war with us. We don't want you to fight for us. Just to stay away from our way. Stop giving them money. Stop buying their oil. They thought this Iranian woman is coming to come and beg, please help us. She said, we don't want your help. It's your help is the problem. The Western stupidity is the problem. You and your leaders are a bunch of donkeys. So this woman in red, she was looking at this Iranian woman. She don't even know how to say her name. Her name, Maryam Zazidi, Zazidi, and she is looking down at her in a very disgusting way. And that guy, he said, disgusting. You know, we cannot, you know, we cannot really do anything to help you. You know, we cannot uh, do, go in war, and you know, because uh, because of uh, freedom in Iran. So this woman, she shut them up in a second. She said, "Who said we want your war?" Who said we want your attack? Who said we want your army? What we want is to leave us alone. Who is supporting the dictators around the world? You ask yourself the question, you know who. When Saddam Hussein was fighting Iran, who was supporting Saddam Hussein? USA. When Osama bin Laden was fighting Soviet Union, who trained Osama bin Laden and his men? USA. USA. They just exchange puppet. When Saddam Hussein decided to go close to Russia, they didn't want to get rid of him. When Saddam Hussein is close to them, he is their friend. They protect him. Who is the one who protects the regime in Saudi Arabia? Who is the one who protects the dictators of Qatar? Trump, he went in the front of the White House. The video is still there. 
He said the prince of Qatar, he should stop supporting terrorism or else. Two weeks after, suddenly prince of Qatar became our friend. Joe Biden, he invited the prince of Qatar to USA and he gave him a rank of a special friend. Go check the video. Qatar now is a special friend to USA. Number one country in the world who oppress Christians, Hindus, Buddhists, atheists, everybody. Number one country in the world who support ISIS, Al-Qaeda, Muslim Brotherhood, you name it, is the most close friend to us now because now they need gas. <laughs> so foolish is the one who think that the American will help you. That if the Amer I'm not talking about American, by the way. I'm not talking about American people. I'm talking about those who they are in the government. They are evil as the devil himself is evil. Maybe more. Maybe even they can teach the devil how to be evil. So if you are a person seeking a freedom and you are thinking one day that the one who will give it to you is the American, you are just a fool. As you see, they oppress their own. Maybe we have more freedom than you, but we don't have a freedom. Do you think this, the video will stay on YouTube for long? Let us see. I cannot have a channel. Each time my channel becomes 100,000, I lose it. Sometimes even not 70,000. Because we have a freedom. The only difference between USA and other countries when it's come to freedom, that you can say things, nobody will arrest you. But YouTube police is exist. Twitter police is exist. And the funny is, that those companies are controlled by atheists. That's make it even more funny, you know? And I found that atheists are more terrorist than Islamic terrorists. They both, they share the same idea of, you know, of, of, uh, of muting you. If you don't speak like us, if you don't agree with us, if you don't say as we say, if you don't eat as we eat, if you don't pray as we pray, we will mute you. So I find that the dictators in the East is not much different from the dictator of the West. The difference is that in the East they use violence. In the West they use technology. I don't know uh, if you agree with me or not, but this is the truth. Maybe you don't like it, maybe you like it, but, you know, reality is reality. Uh, Hassel saying CP is angry in his last life. I don't know, Hassel, you sound like a person who have a diarrhea, Hassel. I think it's time for your mom to change your diaper. Is your name is Hassel or Hassel? You know, some people, their mother, she gave birth to them by normal birth. And some women, to give birth to their babies, they have to take a medicine to have diarrhea. So I think she gave birth to you like shit. Excuse my language. And this is the ex best example of how people, you know, we, we are talking about something serious. And some people, you know, you know, stupid people. Don't get married, okay? Your wife, the first guy she will see in the elevator, he's smarter than you, and everybody's smarter than you, obviously. She will marry him. She will leave you. Uh, I asked Imam about predestiny. My friend, this is not our topic now. Just for, uh, focus with us. We have different topics, so we can talk about the predestiny later. However, my friend, uh, uh, the Imam who says to you about predestiny, as long as you, you ask the question, and just to show you how, how stupid those imams. I asked an imam about the predestiny of a, of, uh, of a man's name written in female vagina. He said our prophet would never say such a thing. I have looked for reference everywhere. Can you help? Yeah, next time we go live, we will show the reference. But look, listen, you know, those stupid people, they say, 
our prophet, he cannot say such a thing. He will never say such a thing. But you believe in destiny, which so so the names of the one who will ever is written somewhere. <laughs> the destiny, the Muslim believe that Allah He wrote everything in His book, correct? So, is He saying it's not over her vagina, but it's His book? Does it make any difference? Yeah, and later next time we go live, ask me, and we will get him busted. What what about you record him saying that to you, so we can play it and we have fun, huh? Or what about you invite him to call me and say to me, no word, the prophet, he says that. Actually, we have a we have an interview, Islamic Sheikh interview, saying the prophet said it's written in the name of, uh, uh, it's written uh, on uh, every woman's vagina, the name of the one who will sleep with her. And I can find it right now, you know. Uh, actually, you know what, let me find it. But this is not our topic. You are not just now changing our topic, my friend. Uh, let us see. Hmm. Here we go. I just it took me it took me two seconds. All those videos, let me show it to you on the screen. All those videos, and those are official real shakes. They are saying that. So, you know, how this guy, he will say this is not true. No way our prophet will say that, you know. Yeah, let me show you. Hold on. Huh. Let us take a selfie for it. Smile, shake, smile. Okay. Now we change the image for you. Here we go. This is a video, very well known video. And this is a big shake in Egypt. And this is Islamic TV. And the title is Written, in the, the, uh, 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 written on the Vagina, the Name of Everyone Will If It. Do you see it? Yeah. So don't tell me it's not there. Or he never heard of it. They are liars. Like they are prophet. Anything is a shameful. They wash their hands from it. They say, it doesn't say that, CP. In the best scenario, they will say, this is the Eve. This is the Eve. I mean, this religion is so strong. It's so strong to the point you quote for them what their prophet says, they say it's daif, which means weak. Now, do you see how strong it is? And actually, I can share the link where, for you. Uh, you know, you can you can give it to the sheikh and tell him, shaky sheikh, does it say that? If this guy is lying, so uh, here we go. This is the this is the uh, here we go. Let me give you the link. I will post it for you. Give it to him, to the sheikh who says, it doesn't say that. The prophet would never say that. Right? Uh, anyway, any other question about our topic? We go back to our topic about Iran. So, you know, I'm, I'm actually, I'm happy to see the Iranian, and I know, actually, once I was driving, and I saw a big festival in a park, a huge park. Uh, and then I saw writing like in a language close to Arabic, but not Arabic, but it was Persian. So I stopped my car to see what's happening. And I thought in the beginning, all of those are Muslims. Huge, huge numbers. I'm talking about thousands and thousands. I mean, I can't even count. I don't know how many. The whole park is full, a huge park. And then when I went in, I found... You know, they have booths for, for like like tents for books, etc. And it turned to be that all of those, they were Iranian convert to Christianity in USA. Maybe many of you do not know that the biggest number of convert from Islam in USA is coming from Iran. I mean, there's convert from everywhere, from Somalia, from 
Afghanistan, from what you name it. But I believe that the number one people who leave Islam is Iranian. This is why I say that Iranian is going to be the biggest Middle Eastern country in the future as a Christian country. Because imagine when this garbage regime collapse. What will happen to this, to this? I mean, people, they hate Islam. People, they hate it literally. They cannot wait to see it gone. So you can imagine what will happen in real time when this cult die. When those Iranian, this Iranian artist, he draw this, this, this piece of art, he is telling you the future of Iran. As soon as people, they get their freedom, they will dump Muhammad and his garbage in the trash of history. The same as the Chinese they tried to do with the Christians. The day I arrived to China, it was the same day they destroyed the biggest church in China. A church hold more than 20,000 members. But look what the stupid, you know, communist, atheist regime did. By destroying that church, the building, I'm talking about the building. Because the church is us, it's not the building. Okay, took, take the building. But what happened, uh, because now those people who used to gather in one church, they have no church. So what happened? They do house churches. And that brought more people, make this church more active and grow way more faster. So now China, actually, you know, in Singapore, you see churches everywhere, every corner. Every corner you see church. Actually, in one street, it was funny for me. I saw a mosque, a temple for the Hindus, uh, for uh, yeah, and temple for the Hindu, uh, a Buddhist temple, and that uh, Taoists they call them Taoists, you know, those that have toys like with beard, Taoists. I'm not, I don't say I'm saying their name wrong, and uh, a church in one, in one line, like between them, maybe like a I don't know, like a hundred meter, you know. So it was funny, but I hope that the, you know the country will stay peaceful because having too many. Uh, too many religion and too many ethnic in one place sometimes can be, especially if one of them is very aggressive and don't accept the others. Uh, so I, I hope this country will stay safe, but I believe uh, there is a big risk for this country in the future. Uh, but going back to our topic, give freedom to people, then you ask them, and then you will know what is the re really their religion. Give a freedom to women. If she decides to wear hijab, good for her. You see, I'm not against women wearing hijab. Why, why are we be against it? What's my business? I support freedom of cloth, freedom of speech, freedom of faith. Now, I don't support a freedom totally like you go naked in the street. I don't want to see a man, you know, walking in his, you know, thing, moving in front of a little kid. So, you know, we have to have a freedom in the in the limit of a human, you know, and common sense. So a woman, she want to wear hijab. What's wrong with that? Wear hijab. You want to cover yourself? Cover yourself. Thank God I don't see your face. Obviously, you are covering it because there is something wrong. Good for you. You want to put a curtain? Put two. This is not my problem. My problem is when somebody told me or tell my wife or my children what to eat, what to dress, what to say, what not to say. You will notice that Muslims, they ask for freedom in the West, but they don't allow freedom in their countries. And I'm talking about those Muslims who they are supporting Islam, not normal Muslims. Like Mimi Hijab, as an example, Nanajis, you know, he wear jeans with holes in it when he was interviewing uh, uh, Yasser Qadi. But the same people, they say that we should uh, follow the, the, the Prophet of Allah. So he go to Egypt, he wear jalabiyah. <laughs> in England, he have jeans, fashion, and have holes when it, even kids will not wear it.
admins anyone use bad language delete his comment I don't see the admins doing anything the admins are drinking tea I think my admins are not there Uh, any question? Yeah, I think my admin they are watching the uh, watching the Twitter. Yeah. The crown prince of Arab will deny Islam. I find that those people, they don't have a crown prince. What a crown prince? You see, all those, they call them royal family. They are Bedouin. They used to take a shower once a year. Uh, uh, you know, they, 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 I mean, it's thanks to the oil. Thanks to the oil and Her Majesty, the Queen of England and the Intelligence Department. Thanks to uh, uh, Lawrence the Arabian. What, what crown prince? Since when those people are crowned prince? I'm like the king of Jordan. This is a king. <laughs> His grandfather, he don't have, he never know what bed is. He don't know what bed is. This is why you see Muhammad when he, uh, when he promised uh, his followers a bed and couch. That was a big dream because this, those Arabs, they, they sleep in the floor. They have nothing. A bunch of goats, camel, only for the rich. And goat only for the rich, actually. Uh, so when he promised them bracelet, silk, uh, couch, uh, did you ask yourself what kind of God he promised you a pillow? I mean, what what pillow? God, he promised you a pillow in heaven? Are you serious? Because he's speaking to those Bedouin. If you go right now and search in the Hadith, search for fleas, fleas. You will find that all Muhammad companions, including Muhammad, they have a fleas. So how those people became kings? <laughs> you tell me. His royal, you know, your majesty. The majesty, his majesty, the king of Jordan. The guy is cannot even pay salary for his soldiers. It's, it's paid by the Israeli uh, you know, government. Uh, the Saudi, not long time ago, like 150 years ago, they have, you know, the Saudi themselves, they used to go and work in countries like Iraq and Syria. Can you believe it? They go and work as maids. Just 100 years ago, before, before, little bit before they, they start the oil production. And now they became crown prince and everybody have a big villa and, they, you know, and, and, and their bathroom is made of gold and uh, jewelries and, you know, yeah, you see what uh, oil can do? But the oil will go, you know, this is just temporarily. You see, human, social, human life change and uh, imp uh, uh, power move between nations. And uh, the, those people, because they are not educated, they are not ready for the money. They did not, they abused the money. They did not use it for their good. You see, you look at some, like some countries, they, they used to be very poor, but in if, you know, not in 50 years. They became the best in technology. They, best, they, they became the best in, in, in the production. Like look at Taiwan. Taiwan is making chip, micro, you know, microchips for everybody in the world. Uh, look at Korea. It was a very poor country. Uh, I mean, many, many countries, because there is, there is, a, there is people there who they have the ground of establishing things. You give it to those who they are not ready, who they are uncivil. You give it to those who they are not. You know, Ibn Khaldun, he spoke about the Arab. And Ibn Khaldun is an Arab himself. And I'm an Arab, as they call me. Uh, he said that the Arab, they are willing to burn a library in order to cook a dish. And this is reality. The prince of Qatar, he built the biggest library in the world, but nobody go to read. <laughs> they, go, they go to watch porn. So money cannot make a nation, cannot make a government, cannot make, you know, can give you, like, let's say, some fuel to, to, to survive as a country. But soon those countries will disappear from the map. 
Count my words, time will come. And Qatar will disappear. Emirates will disappear. Saudi Arabia will disappear. Uh, Bahrain will disappear. I mean, all those countries will disappear. They are because they never was countries. The, those countries, many of you maybe, you are born before them. I'm serious. Go check when Qatar became a country. So if you are like a guy who is maybe 60 years old or 70 years old, you are born before Qatar born. When Saudi Arabia became a country? When? <laughs> so those are not countries. Money cannot make countries. As soon the money is gone, those countries will demolish. Saudi Arabia now is exist because they have oil. The second the oil is gone, there is no resource. All the protection is coming from big giant countries. Powerful countries will go. And then those countries will be eaten by their neighbors, like the Persian, like Iran, as usual. Uh, anyway. No, even Indonesia, and you see, Indonesia is a country is going in the future. This is what I believe. Uh, you can agree, you can disagree. I believe Indonesia will become many Indonesia in the future. Uh, and there is a reason for that. There's many ethnic groups, there's many religions, there's many languages, and this is a weakness of a country. Forget about like, you know, Islamic oppression now. This is not what I'm talking about. But any country, it's not, you know, the territory of that country is based on ethnic, certain ethnic and certain religion. This country will demolish sooner or later. It's just a matter of time. The same as what happened in East Timor and, you know, and uh, west of Timor, east of Timor. You remember what happened. So it's just a matter of time. When things is ready, everything collapsed. The same as the Soviet Union. Soviet Union became the biggest country of atheists in the world. The most powerful atheist country in the world. It collapsed overnight. So when the termite, do you remember the story of the termite eating the steak of a prophet, Salomon, brothers and sisters? Prophet, uh, prophet uh, uh, USA is going to be the same. USA in the future is going to collapse too. But what to glue USA together is the benefit and that making USA stay strong. What does that mean? It means everyone in USA understand very well that USA together is mean it means wealth for them. USA is not together, it, it will take their wealth down. And this is why USA will stay for long, long, long. But if that target and that aim disappear, then USA will collapse. Will become a state again, like, like now it's United States of America. If if one state, two states, three states from the big ones. They notice that they do not need the rest, and if they stay wealthy alone, and they do not need any power, then they will separate themselves, and they will ask for separation. But that will never happen, because USA, you know, strategic power is based in the, how huge the land, not only how huge the money, not only how huge the, uh, uh, the, uh, uh, the technology, uh, and at the same time, uh, the resource, you know, like every state have different resources, so they complete each other. So that is the benefit. You see, like this is, a, as they say, a friend would benefit. This is exactly what's happening in USA. And as long those benefits exist, you know, the state will become stay or will stay state. But if one day those benefit is gone, then the state will collapse. Uh, Yeah, and then, you know, and depend how how much people. And actually, I saw articles. By the way, there's one guy he made an article saying that Christianity is declining and we can't be minority in USA. I love because two years ago, the same newspaper they make uh, uh, an article saying Christianity is booming because of Corona. <laughs> So I laugh. So I say, okay, so all what we need is just a corona again, and then we will, we will boom. I mean, this is stupid. So they hate us, you know, they, and they fabricate news. 
and they spread the news and you will see everybody copy the same article you know they, they, this article will be like uh, recycled for the coming 10 years 20 years the same article uh, but reality is if you go in USA you will find churches totally full uh, actually houses around churches are cheap cheaper why because of parking hundreds of cars suddenly appear in the front of a church to park so in USA anyone who live in USA you can go any anytime in Sunday go to a church and you will see what I'm talking about if you are a Muslim, go take your camera with you, so we can laugh. Uh, and now a Muslim, he will find an, an, uh, uh, an, an, an old building, nobody go there, and he will record it. Uh, but if you go to churches, it's totally full. So USA, you know, American people, they are going to be united uh, because they understand that it's not for the benefit of any of us not to be united. It's our weakness to be divided. However, Democrat, Democrat, they are trying to destroy this country. And I will tell you how. When you have open borders and you do not know who is coming, uh, then you don't get the quality citizen. You see, like in Australia, if you want to apply to go as an immigrant to Australia, or, you know, you have to have uh, certain degrees, like, you know, the application have points, you know, point, 10 points, 50 points, 60 points, etc. So the more degree you have, the more, etc. And then, then they accept you because you are quality person and that will make the country strong but when you have open borders and this borders is now used for drugs dealers and they are killing more american kids than any disease ever you can imagine those democrats they don't want open borders they don't want to close border for a very simple reason they are trying to get more supporter for their party because all those immigrants who is the one who will give us citizenship democrat so we will vote for Democrat. So they are trying to change the demographic party support. So, uh, uh, and this is why you notice now they are angry because the uh, Republican, they are shipping them. If we can use the word shipping, you know, maybe it's not a good word. They're sending them there uh, uh, to New York or to, uh, you know, uh, uh, Repo Democratic Party uh, states. They get angry. But they were shipping the same thing they were doing, those immigrants. They send them to everywhere, and, and, and you know, like Texas, Arizona, it's full of them. So they are trying, they want them to stay there because after 20, 20 years, 30 years, Arizona will become Democrat. Texas will become Democrat. And uh, California already, this is what happened in California, actually, because a huge number of immigrants, and those immigrants granted always citizenship or a green card through the De Democratic Party. So they are became loyal to the Democratic Party. But those people themselves, they don't even know what Democratic Party is about. And this is why after some time, you will find even those who they are immigrant, they in the beginning support Democrat, they start supporting Republican because they knew that even, let us say, the wealthy enjoy in USA is going to be destroyed if Democrats stay in office. This is why you see in Texas, I think Texas or Arizona, I forgot. Like uh, there is a district where the majority are uh, Democrat. And now there is a Mexican lady. Originally, she is a Mexican, Latino. She is, she, she is going for Congress, I think, or senators. I'm not, I'm not sure. Somebody can correct me. But she is a Latino immigrant, and she is against open border. So you will see the number of uh, uh, Latino people themselves against the open border because they knew that this is hurting them, not supporting them. Democrats, they don't think about the future of the country. They think about how we can hold power. The same as Biden, when he do all decisions in his party, they don't care for America. They care about how we can hold power. So Biden, he decided to share, uh, like, uh, you know, like we have a strategic oil reserve. So he he, he, he put two drops of oil in the market so the price will go down before the election, but that will not work. The price of, or they make the Inflation Act, which is very laughable and people are dying laughing at such a thing because the price is so high and actually it's increased. Uh, because they want to win the election in any way, in any how, he decided to cut the loan of a student, which is good, by the way. But if you think about it, it's bad in the same time. Because Biden is bribing people to vote for him using our money. And he do that before the election. He's not really, he don't care for the student. Did you ask yourself why now? 
few weeks before the election, he will spend $40 billion. And is that fair that some people, they never have a mortgage who spend their life working to pay for their student loan? And now somebody else, he got 10,000 discount. Is that fair? I, as a student, give me my money back. Either you give it to everybody or you don't give it to nobody. So they don't care really how much they spend. This is why the inflation is so crazy. They are just printing papers. The dollar inside the state is losing value. The dollar outside the state is increasing in value. And there's a reason for that. We can discuss it maybe a different time. Uh, but this is stupid Biden is the most stupid president after Obama we ever have. Uh, everything is going wrong. And I will not be surprised, by the way, if people still vote for him. Because American, they are just, you know, it's easy to drive them in direction. Like, you know, just because they hate Trump, they will vote for Biden. Some, many of them. I hate Trump, I will vote for Biden. That's, but he doesn't know why he's voting, actually. You, when you vote for Biden, you are fighting for inflation. Your money is gone. Your price, your, your, your insurance is up. Your rent is up. Your, uh, look at the mortgage. In the time of Trump, anybody can buy a house. Almost the interest was zero. Now nobody can. Now it's 6%. So look what happened in two years. In two years, this guy, he took America back 50 years be, be, uh, uh, to the be behind time. Two years ago, you take a mortgage, you can buy a house. You can. Oh, uh, the gas was cheap. Everything was good. What happened? We have an idiot in the White House and we have an idiot party. Crimes is hiking, drugs is hiking, inflation is hiking, price of houses is going crazy, and mortgage is beyond your imagination. Uh, one of the general uh, that worked for Obama administration said, Biden has a good intention, but he has made and never made a right decision. Well, my friend, I mean, this general, obviously, he is a hypocrite too, because if you have good intention and you never made the right decisions, I mean, you see, do you remember the story of the guy who want to hunt the, the lion in the wood? Do you remember the story? And each time he go to shoot the, the, the lion, he miss. And then the lion, he says to him, either I eat you or I do boom, boom to you. This is Biden. So let's say Biden, he have good intention. But each time he shoot, as, as you said, the, the general, he said, uh, he never made the right decision. He have good intention, but he never made the right decision. Have you ever heard of somebody? He shoot nonstop, but not, not in even one bullet. Shot the target. I mean, this guy is fooling who? <laughs> do you understand what I'm saying so he have good intention but none none of his decision was right it's like this guy who went to the to the wood to shoot the lion and the lion is sleeping he is a few meters away from him and every day he shoot at him and he never shot the lion Is that because he made the wrong decision or he is in purpose not doing it? They are doing this all in purpose. They are just trying to give him excuse, hoping that you are a fool and you will think, oh, he is a good, he's a good man. Yeah, yeah, he's a good man. But, you know, uh, things happen. You know, things happen. Yeah. When, uh, when Biden, he was quoting uh, uh, the Najis Muhammad, was he quoting him by mistake or he was quoting him because he is evil and he is playing games and he's trying to make some Muslims vote for him because he's desperate to win, even though the Muslim, their number is so small in USA? Was that a good, was, was that a good decision? When he was quoting a prophet of violence, saying the prophet says, if you, if you see something wrong, change it by your hand. He's asking Muslims to act as in terrorism. Change it by your hands. And the video is in YouTube. Uh, 
Harun, uh, guys, I, I receive uh, an offer from Harun. Harun is saying to me, he have his sister. Uh, she is a Muslim. Thank you, Harun, for the offer. I don't know. This is a big offer, my friend. I don't deserve your offer. Thank you very much. And really, I don't know what to say. So Harun, he said, I have a Muslim uh, uh, sister in Arabic. And uh, if you like to marry her, uh, you have to become a Muslim. Uh, Harun, I think you need to change the Arabic. You should say if you want to do nikah to her, not marry her. You Muslim don't get married. The word nikah is what you use. Yeah, so he's offering me a sister, his sister, to do boom boom with her. And if I do, you know, I, I need to convert to Islam. So like in exchange for me to convert, uh, he offered me a vagina. Thank you, Harun. You are a good Muslim. Mashallah. It's mashallah. Yeah. Why you don't put it in English, Harun? Why you put it in Arabic? What's wrong? Hmm? Why why not why not in English? Why you put the text in Arabic? Are you okay, my friend? Don't you want people to see you? You know what are you saying? Thank you for the offer. By the way, you can contact me. We can discuss if you can send me her picture maybe later. You know, maybe I would change my mind. Send me her picture, not picture of her private part. Uh, he's trying to get my attention. Would he get it? Okay. He got what he want. No problem. Uh, anyway, uh, feel free to download my videos. As, as you see, we're trying to change the time between like, you know, so from all way, everywhere people can join Europe, USA. We will do that. And I hope you guys, you have a good time. And uh, as you see, we don't take a side. You know, we don't take a side when we say the truth. The truth has to be said. Never sugarcoat. Never compromise. The pr our problem, our problem is that we compromise in everything. Our problem that we are under oppression and we allow them to oppress us. We allow YouTube to tell us what to say. We allow Twitter to tell us what to say and what not to say. Don't let them take your freedom. A human being without a freedom is no different than a dog in a leash. A human being who cannot live free, he don't know what he lost. You just lost your life. All your life is controlled by somebody else. Freedom is the most priceless thing a human being he have. It's not gold. It's not silver. What if I put you in a room made of gold and silver, full of food, and you have no freedom? You will go crazy after a few days. Freedom, my friend. Never give it up. Say what you believe. Never agree unless you agree. Never say I respect unless you respect. Never tolerate intolerance because the one who tolerate intolerance is a stupid uh, anything else before we finish for today we will see Anyway, we will say hello to people of Singapore and thank you for all those people who welcome me to the country. Uh, uh, you know, uh, Singapore is a really a beautiful country in one place. The rest is not really beautiful, as you know. And uh, I always I decide to say the truth. Some people ask me, he said, uh, I, I, I think you are enjoying too much Singapore. I say, Singapore, there's one, two spots are beautiful. The rest is not really good. And uh, maybe later I can speak about it more. Uh, but I feel sorry for you if you live in Singapore because you live in a parking country. I mean, wherever you go, you pay for parking. I, I said to myself, thank God I don't live in Singapore. Parking, parking, parking. I mean, you don't even... The, 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 from the moment you wake up to the moment you sleep, you are paying money. What kind of a country 
a citizen have to pay in order to move around, not for transportation, to park. It doesn't make sense. Use the train? Yeah, no problem. Use the train. Okay. Yeah, but, uh, you know, uh, <laughs> I'm not going to talk about it. It's enough. But anyway, my friend, you see, we in the in USA, we don't appreciate what we have until we go and see how other countries live. Honestly, when you go and see how other people live, you feel for them. Price of a property is so crazy. A small, tiny apartment for millions of dollars. Millions. We are not talking about a hundred thousand. To buy a car, it costs you a, a, an arm and a leg. In just go search right now, you will go crazy. People cannot even afford to buy a car. So what the benefit of owning a million dollar, but you cannot buy a car? <laughs> oh boy. While you are in Singapore, learn Bahasa. I speak Bahasa already. I just said Bahasa. What's wrong with you? Come on. It's very easy. You know, orange, orange. I met many, uh, many uh, Indonesian in uh, Singapore. I mean, many. Actually, it's one only. But, you know, we are Arab. We like to say we. Like, we met many. You know? Yeah. Uh, buy weekly MRT ticket, CP, or even profit. Okay, thank you for the advice. Uh, yeah, I'm, but I'm serious, you know. I mean, in USA, there is areas that the. I mean, you can buy a villa for for a fraction of the price of a little tiny apartment in Singapore. So, what's the benefit of having a million dollar in your pocket when your million will do nothing to you? You know what I mean? So, if you are Indonesian who live in Indonesia and you can buy a house for fifty thousand dollar, you are more rich than somebody living in Singapore. I'm telling you, because you look at the house you bought, the yard you have, and what he have, he have a million dollar. But yet he don't have a balcony. <laughs> I don't know, I see, I see things in my own way. You know, if your money you make, which is a lot of money, cannot give you a life to someone who lives in a poor country, that means you are the poor, not him. This is my philosophy. You don't have to agree with me. Right? Yeah, what the benefit of having those minions? But you cannot buy, they cannot even have a dog. You know, come on. You know, in USA, uh, uh, a person walk in Walmart, he can, there's many cheap areas in USA, very cheap, you know, I mean, they have property, big yard, etc. So if you compare, you will feel like somebody work in Walmart in USA is like a king who live in Singapore. Uh, Anyone living in Adam Foot? Uh, uh, yeah, somebody built a villa in his shoe. <laughs> uh, no, this is this is how a human being is. Uh, you don't appreciate until you see something different. You know, honestly, when you see something different, either you appreciate what you have, or you say, "Oh man, what I have was horrible." American, they are really lucky. We can say blessed. Uh, even now with Biden, with the stupidity of the Democratic Party and the inflation, things is way cheaper than all those countries. I mean, you cannot, you cannot even dis discuss how cheap it is comparing to those countries. So you complain about what you have, but when you see other countries, then you will know how lucky you are. Uh, Well, I don't know about Indonesia. I don't know about, uh, oh, there's no data. Uh, okay. Is, is, uh, is, is, guys, you still hear me? YouTube, give me a message. Is still everything working fine? Okay, look like it's fine. Yeah. Anyway, guys, I think we have enough for today. I hope you enjoy it. Feel free to download my videos, share them with your friends. And from now on, please take a note. We are going to do live in uh, a Christian Prince account. We switch account, but doesn't matter really which account. 
this one have 90,000 I might start a new account what well, have one subscriber it's going to be me you might ask yourself why because uh, uh, YouTube don't like us uh, YouTube is a company run by atheists and they oppress the same as the Islamic regime of Iran the second you say something hurt their feeling they take you down but I promise you nobody can take me down only my Lord so uh, subscribe to patreon it's for free so you can be updated which channel will be will be on because you never know we might go right now we come back tomorrow we find this channel is gone even it has more than 90,000 I don't care for the numbers I care for real people real supporters real human being who want to think and act and do what he should do numbers mean nothing quality mean a lot you see we have a Lord his name is the Messiah one day he was alone then he have 12 disciples then he changed the words he don't have a 12,000 he don't have an army he don't have kings he don't have generals he don't even have a horse he changed the word and you have his power in, in your hand never compromise never bow down to anyone save God never f let them force you to say what you don't like to say never say I respect you when you don't never say I agree with you when you don't because the second you do that you lost your humanity the second you do that you are Antichrist for you are a liar the second you do that you are a part of the evil plan of the devil Jesus said who is the father of all lies I knew the answer the devil Satan is your father those who lie and the second we say things we don't believe in we are part of the plan of the devil I remember once I was discussing religion with women from Jehovah's Witnesses she said please stop I respect your belief I said I don't respect yours why I will if I don't agree with you I believe that you believe in a lie how I can say I respect your lie what happened to this earth why everybody is a hypocrite why everybody is a politically correct why nobody want to be truthful the answer is very easy for the truth will hurt and many are cowards they knew there is a consequence come with the truth the same as the people of Iran right now they are being arrested killed for saying the truth we don't want hijab we don't want your garbage we don't want you to force us to tell us what to do what not to do we are a human we are not dogs even dogs they can park So my friend, stay strong, faithful, and the one who is with the Lord. And if you are with the Lord, and the Lord is with you, who could be against you? Glory to his name. We are victorious, and we always will be. God bless you, and see you soon. This is your brother Christian Prince, who is serving you humbly for today. I hope to see you soon again. Don't forget to subscribe and tell people that we will be in Christian Prince account for now. Maybe for coming a month, two months, three months, we will see. See you tomorrow or the day after. God bless. Take care.